it's just a spare bedroom actually, but it's my studio. And that means that I'm not going to be recording at some grubby little corner of the kitchen table that I cleared off. And that means that you're going to see more of my artwork, you're going to see more of me, and you're even going to see cool stuff <laughs> like this painting apron. Okay, can you see that? Can you see that? Yes, you can. Um, so this apron I've had for 10 years, so forever. <laughs> Um, and when I bought it, when it was new, I actually put paint onto it purposely. <laughs> Just wanted that artist's look, you know? Anyways, today we're going to be focusing some more on watercolors, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to do watercolor leaves and vines, and we're going to work those leaves into little wreaths. And of course that's great for the holiday season, for Christmas, but it's also nice if you're looking forward to next spring and summer, and maybe you're thinking about wedding invites or designing stuff for a baby shower. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so let me start by showing you something that I worked on pre-taping this video. So I did this on watercolor paper and I used this paint palette right here and I just did a really simple wreath and it um, started as an oval and then I just added these really simple leaves and I put in a few berries and flowers and then when the watercolor paint dried I went in with my sharpie pen and I added those black sketchy lines. I really like that sort of sketchy quality gives it a nice um, illustrated look, sort of like something out of a storybook. And of course, I'm a sucker for that look, but you don't need to do that, and that's totally up to you if you wanna add that uh, pen to your watercolor. But this is pretty much what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about you know doing leaves and working with your watercolor. And I think if you're new to watercolor, this is sort of a good place to start, and you can create something really pretty, and it's actually quite simple. So, this is what we're using today. Um, you're gonna want some watercolor paper. I'm using 140 pound cold pressed paper. And cold pressed uh, just means it has a nice texture to it. You can also use rough uh, watercolor paper. And I've got a little palette here, and this is eight colors. I think I got this at Michael's, um, and I really like this one because it has a nice feature, and that's the lid is actually a palette, and it's easy to wash out, so that's kind of nice. And then I've got um, a synthetic number seven paintbrush, and I'm gonna use that for pretty much everything we do today. It's a little bigger, and it's sort of nice for doing um, leaves and vines and flowers. Then I've got a few glasses of clean water here. I like to use at least two. I've got paper towel for blotting, and yeah, and that's it, okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna start by mixing up a little bit of green paint, and we're gonna talk a little bit about um, uh, how to do a few different leaves and just sort of how to move the watercolor paint around on the paper. So I'm just adding a little green and yellow. But once you've got this nice pool of green, you might want to blot on your page a little. And then use a, using a piece of scrap watercolor paper, you're just going to practice doing some lines. And watch where the paint pools. Try adding different pressure, so go light and then add more pressure. And you'll see you can kind of drag that paint. And where that paint sits is important because that'll be a darker spot and that just gives you you know some difference and some texture and it's going to make your painting look a lot more sophisticated. Now to do a leaf, let's do one here. I like to just sort of go like that, move the paint around a little, a little lighter at the top, heavier at the bottom there. And then I'll leave that to dry, and then I'll go back in and add a little shading on there. But another way you can paint a leaf is to do wet on wet. So I've got some water here, and I'm just going to do the shape of a leaf on the paper. Nice and wet. And then I'm going to add paint to that. And watch what happens when I do this. It'll bleed out into the shape. And you can really sort of guide it around within that the form of that leaf. So 
that's wet on wet and that will give you a really nice uh, look. I did a little of that up here. So that would be wet on wet and you get this really sort of look that you can't control and that's sort of the, what's nice about it is you're not trying to control it. You won't really know exactly what it's gonna look like until it's dry. And you can always add a little more water or a little more paint. And then when it dries, you're gonna get a really interesting look. All right. So let's try doing a little uh, vine. So to do that, we're gonna start by just painting a line. It can go any which way. And then we're gonna add little leaves. And I like to start at the point of the leaf and come in. And remember, you can always do wet on wet at any point. You can go back in and add a little more color or more water to give it a nice look. And you're really not trying to go for perfection here. Watercolor is all about having fun and just, I like to think of it as just seeing what happens. I don't really feel like I'm in complete control of the paint, but I really enjoy that. That aspect of it I find um, is really freeing and, and it makes it a lot of fun. Now another thing we can do, I'm going to use some of these up here because they've already dried, is on a leaf like this, once you've allowed it to dry, which doesn't take very long, you can mix up a little paint that's a little bit darker, just a shade darker, and you can go back in and add detail. So what I'll do is I'll just paint half the leaf with that darker color. And I really like the look of that. It, it gives a lot of depth to the painting and you can also add a little detail on the stem. Or instead of doing half the leaf, you can go back and you can add veins. Okay, that was a little messy. Let's try that again. <laughs> you can add veins to the leaves. And I don't like them too perfect, that's sort of nice. If you dry your brush off, you can bleed, bleed them out and blend them in a little. And then I'll show you what all of that looks like once it's dried. Okay, so now let's talk a bit about how we would actually approach preparing a wreath. So what you can do is, I've got my watercolor paper here. You can take something round and you can trace it or you can just um, draw it yourself. So I tend to like to freehand it. Well, I like to do both. Sometimes I like the symmetry of tracing something and other times I like to sort of make it a little wonky. So I might trace something and then I'll go around that and sort of create something that's a little more um, perfectly imperfect, we'll call it. So there we go. Something else you might want to consider when you start is do you want the top of the wreath to be open? Um, that can look really pretty when it sort of meets and the top, um, there's a little space there, so it's sort of as if these two branches are coming together. I think for today I'm going to do um, a wreath sort of in the whole round, but either one looks really pretty. So I'll just get a little more green paint here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my green paint and I'm going to go in and make small individual lines that follow the larger pencil line of my circle. And once that's all done, it's time to start painting some leaves. And when we put the brush to the page, make sure you're thinking about the pressure and about where that paint is going to sit. So you might start with heavy pressure, or light pressure and then getting a little heavier and leave that paint sitting there. So you can see there's gonna be some contrast there when that dries. And the way you move your brush can really create the shape of the leaves. So you just can touch that tip to the page and then pull down a little more pressure and you'll get 
um, get a, you know, you can make that leaf larger at the bottom just by adding some pressure to your brush. And you can always go out a little, put that little stem there, and then add your leaf. And try not to overwork it. Even if you feel like, oh shoot, that leaf wasn't perfect, don't worry about it. You're not going to notice it later. It's better to leave the watercolor underworked um, than it is to sort of think about everything and, and try to be too much of a perfectionist. A lot of times things will dry differently than you can imagine and they'll look beautiful when they do dry and other times you just won't even if something isn't exactly the way you had planned you won't notice it later as part of the larger whole. Okay so I'm gonna speed this up now but what you see me doing here is adding these pairs of long green leaves all around the circle of the wreath and I'm moving the page as I need to so when you're painting if you need to move that page around to make it easier for yourself that's a good idea but now you can see I've got that all finished all my leaves are done and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let it dry so here it is after 20 minutes of drying time the paint has bled out into the paper really nicely it looks good and now we're ready to add a little contrast if we like Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm now, I'm mixing up a little bit of a darker green, still going with a fairly warm color of green here. And let me just clean that brush off completely. And now I'm going to take a little bit of this darker green and I'm going to add a little bit of contrast to some of these leaves. Not all of them, I'm just going to do a few. And I'm still, you know, considering the pressure of the brush where I'm letting that paint sit, you know, you can very much move the paint around. And since I was doing a little lighter at the top and heavier at the bottom before, I'm sort of going back in and adding just a little more contrast at the bottom of the leaves or maybe on one half of the leaf like that. <clears throat> Let's see, so just as I showed you on the practice sheet, just sort of coloring in a half a leaf on some of them or you can add a little bit of veining or whatever you like. And that just, this is just going to add a little more depth to our initial painting. Now that that's done, you're going to mix up a little more green. Do another shade. It can be lighter or darker. And we're going to do these little guys over here, these little vines. So start with a line anywhere that you think could use anywhere on the wreath that you think could use a little more decoration, a little more leaves. And you're gonna kind of weave these little um, ferns or vines into the, the wreath, into your initial design there. And that's what you see me doing here. I'm just kind of working this one in. And then for balance and symmetry, I'm gonna add one on the other side of the wreath. And I'll probably put, oh, I'll do two or three or even four of these um, around, the, around the circle. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. Um, I need to balance it out a little more. So at this point, what you can do is you can go in and you can continue to add more greenery. I'm just going to show you on my scrap page here. You could do something sort of a little bit Christmassy. If you were doing this for a Christmas card or a Christmas project, you could make a nice um, sort of evergreen sprig. and. Usually I just do them like that. And then the next thing I'll show you is it's nice to add in little twigs and berries. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of dark brown paint and I like to do a sort of delicate twig structure to start. And then I'll go um, back to the palette and mix up a little purple or red or whatever color and I just drop these nice droplets of paint on there and you create these cute delicate little berries. So let's put that into our final wreath here. And again, when you do this, we're gonna start with those evergreen sprigs. You're just thinking about the symmetry and balance. Where can you place another sprig that can sort of help the overall wreath to look full and symmetrical? Is there a spot that's not quite as wide as the rest of the wreath, especially as you're putting in these final berries? You want to look for those bare spots or thin spots. 
and I'm adding the little twigs and then I'm going to do purple because I don't want this to get too Christmassy. So I'm just going to go add in and add these little um, dollops <laughs> of water and that'll create some, some pretty little berries for our wreath there. Okay, with those berries all done, what you see me doing is mixing up a little light green, or it could be any shade of green, and you're gonna go back in now and add just a few little leaves, the faintest of sprigs or twigs. Um, it's a good idea at this point to sort of step back from the design and just ask yourself, where do you need um, that last leaf? Where is there a thin spot or a bare spot? And you're gonna finalize your design. Okay, that's it. I really like the way it looks and at this point it's all done unless you are a sucker for that black illustrative line like I am. In that case what you would do is wait for this to dry and I mean really wait, make sure it is bone dry and then you're going to take something like a sharpie pen or a Staedtler tripless fine liner and you can go in and add some really nice sketchy lines and give it that very sort of illustrative quality that I love. Um, I think this wreath uh, is perfect as part of a Christmas card. It would also be great for something like a save the date or a shower invite. So think about what you could be hand lettering in the middle there to make this something that's really usable as part of your stationery and hand lettering. And um, of course, if you wanted to, you could also incorporate flowers in a wreath like this. What I would say about that is to just incorporate those at the beginning of the design because they would be a little bigger. So you would put them in maybe after or even before you do those initial uh, large leaves. All right, well, that's everything for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next week.